of said as a joke, when you're finished you should come to Boston. I really, her lab was just building up at that point. She said, I really need people. And, and I sort of laughed, but then a week later I wrote to her and said, let's do it. <laughs> um, we'll start off with uh, a little bit about who you are. Do you mind introducing yourself? Yeah, not at all. Um, so my name is Jim Best and uh, I'm a research fellow here at the University of Sydney now. Um, I do hearing research. So we're interested in, um, I'm interested in spatial hearing and speech perception. So I did my undergrad here, did my PhD here. And I then went overseas for a few years and mm -hmm. I just came back and took up this fellowship here. What, um, was there anything that influenced your decision to move into honours? Yeah, so, I mean, I always really loved science, I guess, but during my, and I got, uh, in the third year I got really into acoustics and audition and I, I did a project with, uh, Dr. Carlyle at the time, and, um, and just decided that was something that I loved, and I'd always been really interested in speech. But at that point, I decided after third year I was going to go do something clinical, either um, medicine or audiology or speech pathology, something like that. And Simon uh, convinced me to stay, and I was having such an amazingly good time that I decided I should stay. What did you enjoy about honours? Is there anything that, that sort of surprised you that, that came out? And Honours, yeah. Honours, I, I didn't really know what was involved at the beginning and um, I think what I loved about it was after doing medical science and planning to go into medicine and all of this stuff, I realised I wasn't very good at covering a huge range of things in a little bit of detail and what I loved about and remembering it all and what I loved about honours was that I could focus on some thing that I love, that I thought was really interesting. What does an honours year involve? What, what do you actually do? It's really about taking a topic and either of your choice or somebody else's, but, but I think at the end of the day just really getting your teeth into it and making, trying to understand every aspect of it and learning how to do all the things associated with carrying out a project. I feel like the honours year, yeah, makes you, yeah, it makes you realise whether you've got the right personality for honours and whether honours is, I mean, for research and whether it's for you, yeah. Um, and it's all, it all really goes on how well you do at it and also whether you like it. So, so you finished up your honours um, and you yeah. obviously enjoyed it and you moved yeah. up straight into PhD? Straight in, yeah. So I'm one of those who never, who never stopped. Did you find there was, there was much of a difference or was it just a natural progression? It was very natural, yeah. I think for me after honours I'd, I'd done a project and it was small but I'd gotten so interested in all these other things uh, that other people were doing or that, that I could be doing that I didn't have time to pursue during honours, so I just felt like there was plenty of stuff I still wanted to do. Teaching something that, that various other academics have talked to have brought up. Yeah. And is that is that a side of things that you really enjoy and it comes into it quite a bit? It is, yeah. I think it's a great part of research. It means and I like that there are these two sides to it. There's the the teaching where you interact with people and you feel like you're passing stuff on. Is there anything else that, you know, you think a science career allows you to do that, that um, a standard, I mean, a yeah. standard job is a bit of a... No, I know, I know what you mean, yeah. Strange to use, but... Yeah, I definitely don't have a sort of... I don't... I, except when you're, when you're teaching or doing some things, you sometimes have a bit of a schedule, but... I guess the travelling is the main one, is you can, you can really be flexible enough to take sort of chunks of time off. I guess you get exposed to other things, I mean, I go to lots of conferences, some of them are about hearing, but some of them are neuroscience or um, cognition or something like that. So you've, you're definitely always getting exposed to other things. So what, so, yeah. what, what do you think has kept you in the, the career? I, mean, I just love it. I love getting up and going to work. And I, and I think I've been very lucky that I've been in labs that I just I just love and feel good in. And um, so I feel really like I could do it forever, I think. But um, I don't know. I think it's the greatest job. <laughs> Are you going? Yeah. I'm okay. going to show you the anechoic chamber. So you can follow me in if you like. 